Okay, so let's continue to look at question number 20 then. A manufacturer enters into a contract to sell goods to its retailer for 1000 rupees. The manufacturer offers a price concession whereby it will reimburse the retailer for any difference between the sale price and the lowest price offered to any customer during the following six months. This clause is consistent with other price protection clauses offered in the past and the manufacturer believes that it has an experience with a predictive or which is predictive of the contract. The management expects that it will offer a price decrease of 5% during the price protection period. The management concludes that it is highly probable that a significant reversal of cumulative revenue will not occur if estimate changes. How should the manu uh, a manufacturer determine transaction price? Guys, if you remember transaction price, a price at which the goods and services are sold under the contract or the consideration collected for goods and services transferred to the customer under a contract where such kind of revenue is highly probable that it will not reverse. It is highly probable that a significant reversal of revenue will not occur in future. How much of reversal can occur in future to a maximum of 5% that is the management estimate. So therefore, while recognizing revenue and to consider a transaction price instead of taking 1000, I will include even that 5% of a discount which I would offer in general. So that means about 50 rupees. Therefore, I will only recognize a revenue for 950 rupees. The balance 50 rupees which is expected to be reimbursed to the customer will be shown as a liability. Clear? If I have to reimburse this, then the, then the liability portion will be paid off in cash or adjusted against the subsequent bill. Or if in case the discount need not be offered, then at a subsequent period of time that is after six months in this contract, in this contract if it, after six months, if there is no significant discount being offered, such liability will be subsequently recognized as revenue. So what is your accounting entries that will occur in this? Customer account debit or bank account debit to sales, but customer will be debited by 1000 to sales revenue recognized only for 950 to liability for rebate 50. This liability for rebate, if I have to adjust in future or to repay in future, then the liability account debit to bank will be the entry. If in case during the period of six months, I have offered only a discount of 20 rupees maximum to any customer, then the entry will be liability account debit 50 to say, uh, uh, sorry, uh, to your cash, which is to the extent of 20 and balance 30 will be recognized as sale. Clear? So liability for rebate account debit 50 to cash 20 to sales 30 rupees. So this way, whenever you are not certain of what is the transaction price, then recognize revenue only to the extent where there will not be a significant reversal of revenue in future. To such extent, I can recognize revenue. So here I will recognize revenue on the date of transaction to the extent of 950 rupees only. Electronic manufacturer M sells 100 televisions to a retailer for 50 lakhs, which is 5000 rupees per television. M provides price reduction to R by agreeing to reimburse R for the difference between the price and the lowest price that it offers for that television during the following six months. Again, very similar to what we have seen in the previous question. Based on M's extensive experience in similar agreement, the following are the estimated outcomes. When there are multiple outcomes regarding a transaction price, there are two ways of determining transaction price. If there are only two possible outcomes, then the most likely outcome will be identified. If there are more than two, then I'll have to go for something called as expected value. What is expected value? Expected value is a sum of probability into outcome. So each time there is a probability being set up or estimated, identify the outcome, identify their probability, multiply all the estimated outcomes into probability and get the total that is called as expected value. This occurs only in situations where there are multiple outcomes possible in a transaction price and the number of outcomes are more than two. If there are only two, then I will not go for expected value, but I will go for 
most likely amount. So here there are three estimated outcomes. So where the price reduction is zero, the probability is 7,000. Guys, if the price reduction is zero, then the transaction price will be entire 5,000 rupees per television. If the price reduction is 500 rupees per television, that means the price will be 4,500. Then the probability is 20%. A price reduction of 1000 is also possible. That means where the television is only offered at 4000 rupee transaction price having a probability of 10%. Determine the transaction price. Find out. So 5000 into 70% plus 4500 into 20% plus 4000 into 10%. Calculate and check. 5000 into 70% is 3500 plus 4500 into 20% is 900 plus uh, 1000 into 10 percent is how much? 1000 into 10 percent, sorry, uh, 1000 is the discount, right? 4000 into 10 percent is 400. That means answer is 4800 is the expected value. That is the expected value or the transaction price at which the manufacturer M shall recognize revenue. So, manufacturer M will recognize revenue for 1000 televisions at the rate of 4800 per television. Therefore, the revenue will only be recognized to the extent of 48 lakhs and not 50 lakhs. Clear? After considering the relevant fact, M has expected value. Uh, total predicted consideration will be entitled. As a result, the expected value is 4,800 per television multiplied by 1,000 televisions which are sold to retailer R. Therefore, the answer is 48 lakhs. A construction company C enters into a contract with customer E to build an asset depending on when the asset is completed. C will receive either 1,10,000 or 1,30,000. Guys, again transaction price having multiple outcomes. What are the two outcomes? If you have completed within the particular time, then I will receive 1,30,000. If it is not completed, then, then, then if it is not completed within the given time, it is 1,10,000. So if the project is completed on time 1,30,000, if project is delayed 1,10,000, the probability that I will complete the project is 1,30,000 for 90% of the times. There is always a chance that I may not be completing the project on time, but the probability of occurrence is only 10%. In this case, do not go with expected value. Why not to go with expected value? Because the multiple transaction prices available here or multiple outcomes available here are only two. When there are only two possible outcomes, then instead of going for expected value, I will choose what is the most likely amount. What is the most likely amount here? 90% probability of occurrence is that the project will complete on time. Therefore, I will consider the transaction price as 1,30,000. If you would have multiplied with the probability, then your answer is wrong. Because I will only multiply with probability when the number of outcomes in determining a transaction price are more than two in number, then the probability uh, multiplication will come up. Here are only two outcomes, most likely amount and not expected value. Therefore, 1,30,000 is the most likely amount. Therefore, that is the transaction price at which the transaction shall be recorded or revenue shall be recognized. Look at question number 23. A franchiser F, uh, sorry, franchiser Y licenses a right to operate a store in a specific location to franchisee F. The store bears Y Limited's trade name and F has a right to sell Y Limited's product for 10 years. Y pays, sorry, F pays an upfront fees, fixed fees, and the franchisee contract also requires Y Limited to maintain the brand through their product, improvement, marketing campaigns, etc determine the nature of license. Again, this happens to be the same additional paragraph which was introduced by ICA where we said licenses are of two nature where there is a license of intellectual property as it exits at the point of contract or as the content gets created. So therefore, it is over a period of time or at a point of time. Now look at this question and let me assess or analyze in which category does this license fall? Y Limited has given license to franchisee F. Clear? So, what is the right which is given to use their intellectual property of Y's trade name? Okay, that means you, you use Louis Philippe or Arrow or any other brand that you want. 
you use it and you start selling the product provided what is he saying y limited will sell the product for 10 years the f limited will sell wise products for 10 years and they will and they will have to require y limited to maintain the brand through product improvements marketing campaigns etc therefore here f limited when he is taking a license from y limited to use his trade name and also to sell his products he is expecting he is expecting the franchisor y limited to maintain his product improvements and marketing campaigns throughout that is the reason why we will say that the entire contract is not to be recognized at a point of time but should be recognized over a point of time clear so here in this case the license is required to be created over a period of time this is exactly what we are saying so the intellectual property is uh, is for over a period of license and not as it exists at a point of time when the license is granted therefore revenue should be recognized over a period of time look at the question answer is estimate why limited assesses the intellectual property uh, f limited accesses the intellectual property as it exists at any period of time on the license this is because he is required to maintain while he is required to maintain the brand which is significantly affected by the intellectual properties any action by y limited has a direct positive or negative effect on y and these activities do not transfer good and service to f therefore y recognizes the upfront fee over the entire 10 years of franchisee period that is the reason why i stated that sentence license provides f limited to access the ip as it exists at any point of time during the license period not as it exists at the point of time at any point of time during the license period however the license exists he will start getting the benefit we have seen netflix example out there if you remember right so as the content gets uploaded on netflix the viewer has a right to access such kind of information clear question number 24 contractor p enters into a manufacturing contract to produce 100 specialized cctv cameras for customer x at a fixed price of 1000 rupees per sensor q can cancel the contract without penalty after receiving 10 cctv cameras specify the contract units guys whenever i talk about a contract unit then it should be a non-cancellable contract a unilateral right of any party to terminate a contract without payment of any damages to the other party cannot be considered as a contract with customer at all i'll repeat the sentence i said as a part of india's 115 when we are looking at contracts i said a contract which gives a unilateral right to any party in the contract to cancel the contract without payment of damages to the other party cannot be considered as a contract within the scope of india's 115 here though the contract is for 100 cctv cameras which have a price of 1000 rupees per unit or per uh, uh, sensor he is saying that q can cancel the contract without payment of any penalty after receiving 10 cctv cameras so without payment of any damages to the other party there is a right given to customer q to cancel all further orders therefore according to india's 115 i will only consider the contract to be of 10 units itself here read it p determines that there is no substantive compensation amount payable to q on termination of the contract no termination penalty it is close it is akin to a contract to produce 10 cctv cameras to give it to q and an option to purchase the additional 90 cctv cameras hence the contract of 10 units here 